Hello everyone and welcome to the video on how to paint portraits with oil pastels. So I'm going to start off first of all by talking about um, the portrait I'm going to do and discussing the pastels that I use. So this is a portrait over here of Maggie Smith, uh, Brighton resident as far as I know. And I chose this because it's a face that everybody knows. Um, the photograph was taken from a a newspaper article although I can't remember which newspaper and I couldn't find the credits for the photographer anyway I didn't take it so what I liked about this apart from the fact that she's a very recognizable face were the lidded eyes and the colors within the skin and just a nice um, expression the smile um, the hair's quite interesting to do as well. I like the colours. The colours around the eyes are, you've got reds, you've got slight purples, there's a hint of blue in there. There's a lot of green because um, portraits um, or faces reflect the colours that are, are around them. And you can see the background to this um, photograph is green. And I just liked all the um, lines on her face. I thought they added expression. So that's why I chose it. The pastels that I like to use are Sennelia. I find them very high in pigment and very easy to manipulate and move about on the surface of the page. I was given this box of assorted colours and I've always found that this was the best set to buy. You can buy landscape colours or you can buy portrait colours. I found that they were a bit limiting for me, so I preferred the assorted colours and I've added colours to them. Some colours, for instance, like titanium white, I've just replaced as I've gone along. And as you can see in my box, they are very used. So I'm going to start by drawing out the face and I will probably use a dark colour to begin with so I can see what I'm doing. The paper I'm using is a um, scrapbook paper. It's from Sea Whites and it's just a pad and it's supposed to be for sticking in card and postcards, that kind of thing. But I like it because I like the surface. You can use pastel paper in all a variety of colours. Um, I just prefer this and I quite like the yellow ochre background for portraits. Now at this moment in time I'm not trying to get a complete exact likeness which is a good job because she looks like she's got mumps. I'm just trying to map it out a little bit and then I will be drawing with the pastels as I go. Now choosing colours for her face, I'm looking at all the colours I can find that are um, in the face. So I definitely will have a bit of a dark brown although there's not that much of that colour in there. I think I will have a little bit of, I think this is magenta pink. I definitely want a yellow ochre, which is that one, and titanium white. There we have it. No, that might not be. I think that might be. It's a sort of a flesh colour. Uh, ah, there's titanium white. That actually is a Romney one, and I don't find them as nice as the uh, Sennelia. The Sennelia are so thick, you can um, paint quite a dark colour, and if you want to erase it, you can put a very pale colour over it, and you can just completely cover it. 
they're like butter very nice to use so looking at it I would like to have a maybe a green I use this quite bright green because I'm going to dull it down with yellow ochre and a spot of red so I'm using as my skin flesh color mix um, mainly the yellow ochre the titanium white and the red and then adding in little bits of other color I think I will have a limited palette. I think that will do for now. I might add in more colours. Uh, I will definitely add in more colours for her eyes because they're blue, well, grey blue. So to start off with, I usually start working very light. I'm going to put in all the shadows and I'm going to do that with brown. So over here, it's very dark. So as you can see, very, very light, just mapping out. This whole area is dark down here and just getting the shape of the chin now under here you've got a very hard edge so that her chin comes forward but underneath that it's very dark and you can't really see what's going on too much you can just see the edge of her jacket so squint a little bit there's a bit of shadow under the cheek and under this cheek here as well so I think I'm quite happy with that so far I think her chin might be a bit long so I'll just take a bit off and I'm not sure about her philtrum so I might have to bring her lip up and her mouth the, the, the middle line of her mouth but we'll see how we get on so first of all I'm going to start with putting yellow ochre over a lot of the areas for instance over here and again going very lightly, just building up colour. Eventually, as this goes on, I will end up uh, pressing quite hard and putting colour on top of colour. But I just want to get a feel of it. I'm going to put some yellow ochre under this bit here. Actually, around her mouth is quite cool, so it's not a warm green there. However, the greens are warmer along the middle of the face. So with the green under her mouth, I might introduce a different green. Going over here, I'm going to put a bit of yellow ochre into this shadow here. A lot of the colour here is quite pink and peachy. So I could go over with a little bit of yellow ochre over this area. That might disappear when I put the white and the red on. Going down here, probably cover most of it. So you have got quite a bit of yellow ochre underneath the hair you have reflected colour and there's quite a bit of pink in this shadow up here a little bit of a cooler green along there and it's quite cool down there now for a harmony of picture of image I will probably put a bit of a blue colour down there and maybe a few hints of blue around her face so that her eyes um, harmonize with the skin so I'm adding a little bit of this red into the cheeks and in the nose actually there's quite a bit of red on this side and around the eyes. A little bit more around there. I'm going to ignore the mouth because I always like to put the mouth in later. I save the mouth and I also like to do the eyes later and my favourite bits. So going on to um, the warmer, the lighter areas, I'm going to start adding a little bit of white. Now I tend to use hatching, just going one way, but you don't have to. The way I work with this is I will start adding much thicker layers of colour as I go. So I don't worry about the hatching because usually a lot of that disappears. So it's light down here and around here. I can reshape her face a little bit and I'll go over this area here. It's very pale under the nose so I'm going in with quite a strong white. I can tone that down as I go and then it's pale down here as well. little bit of red around the chin 
what I like to do is I use my little finger to do blending but I also blend with the pastels as well there's a hint of red over here but that's reflected from um, inside the shadow of her fingers which I'm not going to put in on this one so the side of her mouth is darker I'm going to leave that though because I'm not sure that I've got it in the right position so down here there's a shadow and that goes into the creases in her eyes and then there's a darker shadow under this eye Now, some people don't like blending. Um, they just like the Degas style of hatching. I kind of like to blend. I think um, it's whatever you, you're happiest doing. There aren't any real rules. A bit of white in there. So I'm only working on the big shapes at the moment. I'm not going for big details. I'm sorry about the noise in here. I happen to have a new kitten who is just trashing the studio as we speak so if you hear any crashes and bangs that's what's going on white into that Now I've mapped out her face, I'm going to start um, using the pastels a little bit heavier and fill in the areas because usually when I'm painting on this paper it doesn't usually come through. I don't leave areas um, of this colour, this is just a base coat. Areas I'm going to put in more solid white, some up there, down the middle of the nose. And then she's got a highlight down here. I'm going to use the red all the way around this highlight. It's quite dark, but I'll cover it over with white and a yellow ochre. Very, very pale on this side of the nose. However, there is a little bit of a pink going on over here. I'm taking my yellow ochre I'm going to go over this side a little bit heavier and you can see the white starts to disappear. That's probably too dark, so I'll put some white over it. And you can see I can blend using my pastels. It's quite a strong white in there. And then going into the eye, a little bit paler there.
So at this point again I will stand back and have a look and I think I made my face too um, thin here and my neck needed to come out a little bit. I'm going to raise up, when I put the lips on, raise up, oh hello pussycat, um, raise up the, um, the filtrum. Um, I'm quite happy with the rest of it. I will use a dark colour around here to redraw the face. So to carry on. Mm -hmm. This is Kitten. I must introduce her. She hasn't got a name yet because she only arrived yesterday. But she's a feisty lady and very confident and bold. So I will be painting her at some point, I think. Anyway, back to the portrait, less digression. So I'm going to start to go a little bit darker in here.
So just something to mention um, about the pastels is I colour mix on the page and what I will do is because I'm a painter I use the same techniques I use for painting which is I decide which colours I need to mix up and then I blend them. So over here you can see it's starting to build up very thickly. This is what I really like about the Sonalia pastels. When I pull it around it's so thick you can just tweak it slightly and it will blend like that. So I'm starting to get a little bit of a soft cheek here with the skin. It's slightly lighter here, so I'll add a little bit of white in there and then I'll just pull it around with my little finger. The reason I use my little finger is because my little finger is the smallest, so I can get a little bit more detail going on in there. That goes up there, that white bit. Also, I like to use white to get the highlights, but I don't want it to be white because it's very false. So putting it on a collar and then just pulling it round lightens the colours underneath, but doesn't um, turn it too bleached. So I will carry on adding layers and adding colouring. And then what I will do is towards the end, I will start to use a torsion to get detail and I'll be showing you how to do that.
just one point to make here just one point to make here is very often people find these clumsy because they're so thick and big if you I want a point what I usually do is find a little bit on the top there that is a little bit sharper and there's usually a little bit somewhere that is and then I will use that and um, you can't always see what you're doing so you might end up with the wrong line but you can adjust it and you can use a torsion so it's not the end of the world So what I'm doing at the moment now is looking at my tonal values and I'm lightening areas and darkening areas. Um, so I'm just adjusting until I do the highlights. I'm going to tackle the eyes in a second because um, I'm quite looking forward to doing those. And then I'll be, as I said, using a torsion to get the details.
Now I'm finding that I need to add colours. I'm going to add some black because I think the black will help with the eyes to make them really stand out. I'm going to use this green, which is kind of a phthalo green, viridian, for the background and to redraw the face a little bit. I'll be doing a little bit of colour mixing on this side because over here it's more ochre than on this side. So um, I'll be using this green both sides though and do a bit of redrawing and then using the torsion. Now this is my torsion and I usually have one end that I use light colours on and the other end I use dark colours and then I just flip between the two of them. So this is what I will be using for detail. So I'm going to do one eye, a bit of work on the nose and a bit of work on the mouth so you can see how you can achieve um, fine lines and um, a little bit more distinction in places. So taking this eye, I'm going to start by using the black. And on my dark end, which is this one, I will rub it into the pastel and then I'll just put it on like that. What happens normally is that it will go a little bit dull. So you have to get quite a lot on the end of your torsion to get it to be a little bit brighter. and around the edge of her eye so it's darker if 
but inside the iris it's a bit paler so I'm using the light end of my um, portion and I'm going to just put in a little bit of highlight there that is way too strong so I will probably take a bit of that out Quite a lot on the end of this so I only have to slightly touch and it will come off and I'm going to put in her eyelashes I might use the edge of the black for this so I'll just peel the bottom of it get a sharp line goes a little bit higher on this side but I've gone too far so probably what I will do is I'll take some white and red and go over that to clean it up a bit actually I won't use white because that's too too light I'll go over with yellow ochre So to put the highlight in the eye, I've got an awful lot on the end here and I will just touch the surface so some of it comes off. So there's a highlight there. And there. And I need to put a little bit more black on. maybe a little bit of dark into the bottom of the eye here I'm just dragging what's already there and a little bit of highlight above on the lid and it goes paler in here and also a little bit more pale up there what I like about the Sennelier ones is they're so thick you can just keep adjusting. You can put an awful lot of layers on top of layers. Although this area here is becoming very saturated, I think I need to highlight in the white of the eye as well. A little bit there. And draw this line a bit. Oops, a bit too much on there. So I will. I can always take that off. With the dark end of my torsion like that now I've made her look a little bit um, she looks like she's got shadows under her eyes so I need to go in and using what the white that's already on here I'm going to lighten that and just tap it in that's better she was looking a little bit like she hadn't had any sleep And I'll just work this a little bit. Because the lays are so thick now, I can just start to move them around. Oops. Like that. And I can do a little bit of blending with the light end into the lighter areas and the dark end into the darker areas. I think on the nose there's a very strong highlight over this side and I'm going to redraw the nose going underneath like that 
and it goes across here this is not an exact thing which is not a bad thing it's um you get quite um, a loose expressive way of working oh i've been trying to paint this with a cat <laughs> A cat on my shoulder and now he's moving down my arm so off you get so this is where I do all my refining and I think about what needs to be lighter what darker what colors I need to put in on top of colors that's a little bit too much so I'll tap that to blend it in a little bit over on this side it's a bit lighter and you can just see the edge of the nose I'm going to go a little bit darker into the shadow here and redraw the nose a bit which goes down there like that and I'm going to put the nostril in because I can just see it. The nostril is just under here. Like that. And I'm going to do a little bit on the mouth. So I'm going to drag a bit of white up here. Because it's a lot lighter than what I've got it here. And I can pull a little bit of the red using my dark side of my torsion and get a few little creases down there. That white is too white, so I might take a little bit of red on my torsion and just go over slightly, very, very lightly, just to tone it down a little bit. I think I need to re-emphasize the line that's in the middle of the mouth. So I'm just going to go in there. It's very thick, so what I will do is use the pastel to thin it out a bit by extending the bottom lip up higher. And take this out a little bit there's a little bit of a paler color on the edge of here so I'm going to put a little bit of that in and tap it because I've done it too pale and I might just chop this a little bit so I'm just taking what's on the torsion already and the colour that's already on the page. And this lip goes over there. There's a very fine line, which I've made too thick. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit of white into there and thin that line out. And then it goes quite white here. So I haven't actually put any blue into the rest of the face yet um but i might do that so i'm going to blend this a little bit and soften it um, into the edge of here and then i'm going to use my finger just to gently tap it around so it blends a bit more and what happens with this oil pastel is as you use it it does go a bit stiffer so it does actually dry and I find that it's still pliable months later but it tends to keep um, in place because um, it does go it does dry to a certain level
And this is where I'm going to leave it. Um, I can keep tweaking, uh, adjusting the mouth, doing highlights and tonal values. Um, it's so workable. You can keep going for a long time with the colours that you have. So I hope you have a go. Um, the initial outlay for the Sonalia is quite expensive. It's about £30 or I think it's gone up to about £36 now for the set. But then you only have to add occasionally when you need them. And as I say, it's usually, for me, um, titanium white and yellow ochre and cadmium red deep because I use those the most. So thank you for watching. I will look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, goodbye from me and goodbye from the little kitten.